rock and roll? Okay. All right, my name is Scott Gould. I'm a professor of physics, and I'm a salesperson for Microsoft, uh, for uh, uh, MapleSoft. And the answer is, no, MapleSoft does not pay me, but that's really my job. My job is to sell Maple to the students. So that, okay. I'm actually having a very unusual appointment. I'm actually a professor at three colleges simultaneously, Claremont McKenna, Pitzer, and Scripps, which is pretty good because if one of the colleges goes down, I still have a job. We're all members of the Claremont Colleges, which are a set of small private liberal arts colleges nestled in Southern California. Got a picture of that. Uh, Claremont, California. Uh, California, okay. Um, let's take a look here. Just based on my Italian friend, I obviously need to show a picture of the uh, nation of California. Uh, <laughs> it used to be associated with the other, what was called one time United States of America, but at this time it's sort of, sort of loose federation of, of states. Uh, California is here, and actually there is a giant wall that goes all the way around it like this. There we go. Uh, Claremont is here, and those are fire lines at the moment because we're always, in fact, we have actually fires constantly going on. Downtown Los Angeles, Anaheim, Hollywood, so you can see where we are. So we're about 50 kilometers east of Los Angeles. Again, we're a series of small private liberal arts colleges. Each college is about 1,000 mm, students or so. Think uh, Hogwarts, okay? So there's the Slytherin College, there's the, uh, the, you know, the name of the other colleges, etc. The topic that I actually wrote for in order to get to this conference, because I have to actually write papers in order to go to conferences, uh, was this undergraduate upper division quantum mechanics. I did an experiment where I immersed the students in maple. Now, I actually wrote it with the letter E, as in I put their heads underwater and made sure that they drank it in. Um, I did later change it to I on the suggestion of the reviewer. I owe the reviewer a cocktail or two, by the way. Thank you very much. I hope the reviewers will come up and talk to me later. I want to thank them for their input. Um, and in fact, actually, this, base, this difference in the word made me think about what I was doing. And so I'm going to talk a little bit mostly about the first word, immersion. Well, actually, let me tell you again. The big, the E word is dunk the head underwater. The I word is like when we do with students when they want to go on a study abroad experience. They want to go to Canada, right? Okay? And where they learn like, okay, it's not the restroom anymore, it's the washroom. And you pronounce it Toronto, you don't pronounce it Toronto, okay? These types of immersion things. And so I'm going to talk a lot about um, essentially this type of immersion e early on. And I'm hoping that a lot of these, this is what I learned based on failure that I'll see a lot of heads nodding up and down, but hopefully there will be a few times like, what, you did that? And then later I'll talk more about this, but I'm not gonna try to keep it away from quantum mechanics as much as possible. Okay, so again, this is my audience. These are, again, undergraduates. Um, they are choosing physics, so primarily out of interest. They have really no intent of making it a career. Um, they have no coding experience whatsoever, and the math that they have generally is calculus, say, going into the first year, um, and then when they get to quantum mechanics, they usually have some linear algebra, uh, although I would have to say it is often poorly associated, or essentially it's poorly defined for application. It's very, very theory-based, and it's, it's not very useful for us in terms of physics. So actually, I need to know who you are in order to sort of make, decide what we're gonna do in this talk. So how many people here would say a good percentage of their time is dedicated towards teaching? A handful, okay, so about half of people. Uh, how many people here are in the field outside of mathematics? Co uh, cryptography, sort of, okay. Uh, what's your field outside of mathematics? Engineering. Engineering, okay, so I have an audience of about three. Okay, so what I'll try to do is I'll try to direct it primarily, mostly towards teaching of Maple, what I've found is useful, and I think that will maximize our output and, any, um, and spend less time on the physics aspect. Okay, so as I said, my goals here are really to convince students to buy the argument that using Maple has value for them, that they will make a huge investment, and from that, they will get something of value out of it. I want them to feel comfortable using Maple. 
okay i don't want to just throw that at them this is the immersion aspect okay i want them to be able to walk in it's like again going to france you don't they don't simply drop you out in the middle of the country and say good luck okay you have to introduce them slowly you have to carry them but eventually my goal is to dunk their head underwater and make sure that they can breathe in the maple uh, coating and essentially the maple uh, modeling environment. And, and, and maple is really not the, mo uh, is more of uh, the facilitator, but it's again, this top down thinking and through the coating. So here's what I'm gonna do. So these are things that I have found that have worked well um, and over using trying to do something else. First of all, document versus worksheet use worksheet. I found that it has leads to far fewer problems. I have actually have problems with Maple Help. All those videos, they're all done in document mode. Students get frustrated because they do, it's, it's easier for them to f understand what goes on using the worksheet mode. Second of all, use 2D math input works better for me. I used to use 1D, okay, what you see a lot of the time, but 2D sells the product. They see the value and why they are using it. Maple math equals real math. It's not like this mystery uh, wording and mystery coding. And take advantage of palettes, okay? Those are sort of three big things that I force them all to sort of use. Okay, early on, show them maples so much better than their calculator. To them, their calculator is like a drug. They actually sort of stick it in their arm, okay? All right. Make sure, show them that it has value, but it is a good calculator. In fact, just outright ban the calculator. I don't even allow calculators in the room. I don't allow calculators on any calculation. Any calculation I want them to do has to have some maple code behind it so I can see exactly what they did. All right, I got a few heads like, okay, I can, I can sort of buy that, okay. I have found it is useful to walk around and to demonstrate line by line encoding examples. Okay, everybody get your laptop out. We're gonna go through it one by one. Some students do find it better to just watch and take notes, fine. But a lot of the other students in reproducing literally step by step, it's an activity and gets them involved in, in being part of the class. What else? Keep everyone in the game. This one I learned fairly early on. If you have a small class, like I'll have anywhere between 20 and 30, I realized it became very important to not lose them. I just simply say, okay, we got through this step, these three steps, are you still? Did you get the same result that I did? And they raise, oh, I didn't get this result. You walk around, and amazing how I find most of the time, it's like they forgot to put a times on there or they called it um, X with a small letter X and then they use X with a large capital X. I mean, it's just uh, uh, uppercase X. And so those types of checking actually takes very little time to do and it makes them feel like they're continuously, but if, they, if I don't make this effort, then what happens is they kind of lose interest in, in the process and they say, well, it's not for me and I can't do this and blah, blah, blah. So trying to keep everyone in the game. Okay, I try to minimize the number of commands to learn. There are lots of wonderful commands. Sometimes they'll find functions I've never even heard of, but if I can maximize the amount of math output and essentially for me, solving problems of physics with the minimal amount of code commands like solve, assign is an amazingly useful command. Getting the out answer to be assigned to a variable so that you can use that variable later instead of copy and paste, which is what they're used to doing. That's what they got trained in high school to do. They essentially just would take some, and so it's amazing how the assign to a variable and then use a variable is all useful. I also, while there are lists and there are sets and there are other um, curly brackets, uh, parentheses, uh, square brackets, I try to reduce everything to uh, lists if possible. Try not to introduce curly brackets because it's just one more set of delimiters that they have to learn, 50% more, okay? This is my experience. Uh, yeah, as I said, maximize that maple code is real math. And that's what 2D, for me, that's what the 2D math input says. I have students who go on, they take courses in Mathematica, they take courses in MATLAB, uh, they'll use a Python, many will eventually get courses in Python. And when I say, so if you have a problem, what's, you know, what do you do? And, and they'll come up to them and they'll say, well, the first thing I think of is, it's just easier to think in Maple than it is to think in these other coding environments. 
because of the 2D, uh, uh, 2D input. It's prettier, so this is how I sell it. Uh, let's see. Obviously, it's good to have simple uh, how-to documents. The um, Doug Mead is basically, I'm, I'm ripping off from Doug Mead here. I like his book. It says, I only have a few tasks I want to do. Here are the commands, or here are some examples I need to do. Those are essentially, uh, are, I'm borrowing. Actually, I used to force all students to buy Doug's book uh, on getting started with Maple, uh, but now I think, well, it turns out actually we bought so many that the price went from like $10 for the used uh, book market to over $40 for the used book market. Okay. Um, obviously, as I said, minimize code. Uh, this one is, to, I got actually from our computer science people as well. It is useful to lead them through, I found out, but sometimes it is really, really useful that they want to see a very hard problem done. And historically in physics, okay, so this is more physics STEM uh, applied, is they say in class we do the easy problems and you lead us with the hard problems. And it's actually, I've, I have found that it is sometimes beneficial to, which I didn't do in the past, is to do hard problems in class. And I'll just simply say, we're gonna just watch and try to figure out the big ideas, and then we'll talk about them. Let's see, what else we get? Minimize, we can minimize loops with sequence, okay? Uh, as you were talking about, the whole looping idea sometimes is an issue. Uh, actually getting them to vectorize early on is useful because a lot of our students go and do MATLAB. These are things that worked for me. Um, and this is one that, again, is counter to the computer science education uh, philosophy. I touch their laptops. I asked the permission if I could touch their laptops. But the, co the computer science education philosophy is you ta always talk them through and they do everything. And I found that it is so slow. If, I give, if they are, just have a few problems and they come up and they say, well, you forgot a parenthesis here, you forgot a parenthesis here, you changed, and then eventually they start to say, oh, that's what you're looking for, and it just makes the whole process work faster for them. And you know, you got, you got so many students who want to, sure, you're gonna get the, I occasionally get the one student who wants me to do everything, that gets shut down, but that's pretty rare. Usually they're motivated like, oh, this is actually, it's nothing like you're doing any magic here. You're just obviously finding usually just typos. In fact, virtually all their problems are typos. Um, I always try to anticipate uh, errors. Uh, sometimes you go get roots. When they get roots, they, get, they fall apart. Long algebraic solutions, learn to put numbers in so they get something useful. Um, clearly the issue is we've already seen this morning is make it fun, make it visual. Okay, and so these are some of the last examples. Do you know how excited students are the first time I say, get me the 29th digit in pi? Because they can't do that with a calculator. I, didn't, I never realized, I thought you and I, no big deal there. Or I put a thousand, you know, it's like five lines down. Like, and then I go say, oh, I think that's actually a three. It's supposed to be a three, you know, something like that. Um, getting students to code within code, essentially that they, can build a function out of, of some variables and learning the passing idea, and then using those, pass, those functions to build a new function. Oh, you know what? P being able to put the arrow above the V was totally cool. I don't know whoever did this, but they love that. They love that, okay? Being able to write, okay, in physics, we have to make a lot of vector fields. Being able to write a field plot in one line Okay, in Dodger blue, they find the colors. <laughs> the other popular one is tomato. Sorry, tomato, I'm sorry I'm in Canada. Okay, okay. And I always say the letter Z just to make sure that they understand what I'm talking about, right? Being able to do the Dodger blue, those are the types of things that helps sell the products and makes them say, oh, there's something fun about this. It's not just, okay. Um, and it's still readable. It's still very, very readable. I'll, I'll give another example. This example I, I did write, and then I had them modify, is two planets or stars uh, interacting through uh, Newton's gravitational force, okay? And it was this, being able to change the values and watch the animation change, those are the things that I've got biology students who say, oh, there's more to this physics stuff. It might be worthwhile, okay? 
And then being able to draw arrows of vectors with animation, uh, this is what an output of what some of the students do, so they can watch as a charged particle passes by and the magnetic field that it produces. There's actually a better one you can do in vPython, but it only takes them three lines to get this, and that's a big sell. So immersion is primarily for me has been selling, and I've been doing this for about 15 years, and so I've made a lot of mistakes. And I've had students who said, maple is evil. <laughs> um, homework set, this is one I learned this way. I, I, I had to write up, how do I make my maple doc equal a homework submission? Once they recognize they can export to a PDF, uh, in my introductory class right now, within five weeks, the students are saying, I want to do everything in Maple. I want to basically just produce the Maple code, and I'm not going to write anything down. And it, because they saw it was, they can learn the text, how to put text in, they learn how to put the math components in, and it sells. Uh, obviously, as I said, all calculations have to be done by Maple. Um, Here's one thing I had to learn. I used to do, all right, in the first week, we're going to learn about maple, and we spend a lot of time, chung, 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 maple. But what I found is more useful for me is we'll learn the functions as we need them. And that is, then they become more motivated of, okay, I'm not just learning some weird language that will never be of value to, okay? I try to reinforce it, but I limit the number of functions, okay? All right, uh, 40. I got a great team. Excellent. Um, again, this is uh, right out of seeing what I saw in, in Doug's Getting Started book, uh, provide a help and examples with each of my assignments. And um, here's the other one that really, really, this one annoyed one of my colleagues. Um, I assigned a problem where the algebra was so horrendous, she said it took her over a entire whiteboard and a half to finish. And it's solved in Maple in three lines. They set up the equations and then hit solve. And she was like really, really annoyed about that. But that's okay. That sells the product. They say, oh, and they want to use it now for other classes, okay? And sometimes I have to give them a, a reprodu reproduce an outcome, gives them a goal to do. Uh, sometimes I want to, as I said, add complexity to the problem. The problem, for example, you lean against a table and at some point, if you lean far enough over, the friction uh, between the legs on the floor and the rug won't be enough, and the table will slip. Well, what's that angle as a function of basically the, what's called the coefficient of static friction? Well, it turns out that's actually, given the fact that you're pushing against the, floor, uh, against the table with variable force, it depends upon the angle, it turns out it's a pretty complicated problem, and again, something that we normally don't add in introductory physics. So this type of immersion is really, really useful. Uh, more things. I, uh, obviously, the sub functions within sub functions, the generating graphs by hand, okay, being able to generate. I still have them do, um, by hand, do some vector field plots, but I find that when they, when they say, okay, I understand what's going on, why am I wasting my time doing more of these? I'll just get the computer to do it for me. And this is, again, from our Italian friends this morning, che bello, uh, this, is, this is exactly, I found that visualization and the graphical output is the thing that makes them want to do it. And from us, me, as an applied mathematician in this sense, by being able to get them to look at graphs, because that's what they do most of the time when they do science, and being able to interpret is really, really important. So generating these things is what we try to do. Some of the, I'm sure a lot of this you already know. Hopefully there's a few examples in here that you've said, oh, I hadn't thought about that. Um, amazing, this, I thought it was a really dumb example. I put basically, I said, build a cube where you put spheres at the uh, edges, the apexes, the corners, the corners of the cube, and uh, draw some cross arrows. They loved it. It's like, it was like a drug for them, because they got to do spheres, they could put different colors, ones were in tomorrow, some were in Dodger blue. Um, I have found that it is best not to give them code in the code format, but best to give it as a PDF because it forces them to reproduce it, forces them to be very careful. Um, they have to essentially reproduce my answers before they may modify my answers. Say if I have a particularly complex one, 
before they do and they modify and they, they, they add their own. But I, most of them are, are basically coding very, very early on. It allows us now to talk more about top-down and particularly with a lot of physics problems where you have series of you can't solve B until you solve A and sometimes you can't solve A until you solve Z or something like that. It allows us to do it both ways um, because Maple stores all the information. Uh, it allows them obviously to be creative. The whole experimentation, I would love to be in his class. The fact you can experiment, you can change numbers. This is, this is what uh, I, I've had to make sure I just write problems more now and I actually generate my own problems. I'll just take somebody else's problem and I'll say, where are some variables you can twist here? Okay, and here's the other thing. Don't drop the ball. Just keep doing it. They see it and build upon what you do. All right. Whew. That was fast. Let's see what we got. Is it okay? This is our checkup time. We're going to see if you people have been paying attention. Okay. There's, you can cheat on this, but I hope you don't. Which worksheet format minimizes decoding problems? <laughs> now, one of the things is in, I do checkups quite a bit. This is, again, another activity. And getting them to note that in checkups, the most important thing is to develop a narrative and explain the narrative to your colleague, the sh think, share, pair, fair, whatever it's called, okay? That sort of thing. So do we have an answer to this table? You guys all talked about it. What's your answer to here? Worksheet, document, or neither? Worksheet. Worksheet. There we go. Okay. It's funny when you do go to Maple Primes, all the answers are done in worksheet. None are done in document. I know, sorry, people who work for Maple, you, you build these wonderful videos in document mode, and our students are frustrated they don't use them quite. Okay, which student, which type of math input do they prefer? 1D, 2D, or neither? You guys all talked about this already, right? And your answer is 2D. You may not like it, but that's what sells. That's what I'm, that's my experience. What? What's not to like? What's not to like? It's way easier to do math input in 2D than it is in 1D. It looks like math. That's right. Exactly, as opposed to some of the other ones. Bingo. And that's when they finally start to go, okay, I need to now do something more, if I do more sophisticated, then you start to run 1D. When we do um, animations of, uh, in quantum mechanics, where you have to essentially set up uh, systems, um, uh, there's a PDEs, you, know, you do just, you create a map of the, a, a complex answer and the real answer, and then you inter have to interface the two. Yeah, 1D is the way to go. I, I absolutely understand what that. Um, what do we ban in class? Exactly, and it's amazing. I allowed one group to d answer some problems, uh, solving some force problems with calculators, and, and the other group, I said no, and the other group finished in half the time. Calculators are evil, but they're hooked to them. Okay, and how many functions do we introduce? Just a few, all right. Okay, just a few each week and reinforce them. Okay, and the emphasis always is, do you have a better, Daniel, what do you think? What do we emphasize on homework assignments? <laughs> well, you didn't answer. Did you, did you check with your partner? What did you say? You emphasize? Graphs, visualization, fantastic. That's a, okay, this is obviously, this is a checkup for both me and you. Did you, were you actually following? Okay. And yes, I allow Maple in exams. In fact, I encourage Maple use in some of the exams. I also give some exams where they're not all equipment is banned. No calculators, because I already banned the calculators. And it's all conceptual and things like that. And they have to set up. Sometimes they have to write Maple code. Okay, but I allow it in the exams. This rewards the students who are doing the homework it makes if they do the effort. Okay? Rather than just simply say it's only useful on the homework. So they know they have to use it. Um, I allow the, uh, these exams to be opened up to the internet. I know this is very controversial, but guess what? There aren't that many. It's, there's not the coding environment that you get from some of the other um, uh, programs, languages, you know. Um, and of course, again, for exams, I emphasize generating, interpreting graphs. It makes it so much easier just to score the exams, stuff like that. Okay, so what happened when I immersed the students? Well, of course, 
Um, I don't know how much of this means anything to you. Hilbert space, Dirac, Hilbert space maybe for some math people. Dirac notation, a few one dimensional continuous representations, angular momentum, 3D representations continuous. A big thing for us for physicists is that we do a lot of math and in the end, instead of saying the particle is here, we actually say the particle is mostly here and some of it's over here. In fact, technically it's everywhere. It's in a probabilistic or uh, interpretation of the results as if we were to make an experiment. Certain percentage of time we would find at one location and another. So that's what we were doing. This is the immersion aspect. I literally did, when I would introduce a topic, I wrote it out on the Maple worksheet, okay? And they bought into it, okay? Uh, we certainly did problem solving. The advantage by doing to the next level is instead of working it one by one, I found that if I could just hand it out the code and we could talk. In fact, it led to a very useful skill set, which is put the code up and have them tell me line by line what's going on here because when they follow the logic, they are following the physics problem solving technique. So essentially it also teaches them good problem solving technique, okay? And the physical significance of each line, okay? Obviously I try to demand all problems in my experiment to be solved by Maple. Um, this didn't quite all work out completely. I really couldn't force them. Um, I required all my PDFs in my immersion version uh, to be essentially exported from Maple document that I kind of got success on. Um, um, because sometimes they want, they need to import an image or something like that. Now they could put it in, I understand, and I just, it's easier for our, uh, what are they, the system in order to read the data. I, I, it just, it's easier. So this is going into Blackboard or Yeah, something, something like that. They will, but it just, I found it, it's just, it's easier for me in terms of, and the greater for, for reading it. I was going to say, I mean, I would say it's easier to take a, a worksheet, because then if something's wrong, you can see if you can figure out what's wrong. Right, but, oh, but actually. It's just a static, for now. No, no, no it, it's, but it's easier to relatively to read these things. It's not like, we're not asking really, really long problems here. Um, because really, the, all the math, all the problems have been reduced by all the math, because Maple's done the math for me. So if they can't write the code out to even do the math, it doesn't really matter. Because really, in the end, I can look at the graph and say whether they got it or not. But I do want to see the maple commands to get to that graph. Did you have a question? Just a, an observation. Um, I've been using maple for a long time. And uh, I started banning uh, PDF outputs. Oh. <laughs> no, the reason I did is that it's possible uh, it's possible to cut and paste stuff from Maple documents. One of them's yours and one of them's not. Uh, and uh, uh, when I had the Maple code, I could yeah. run it and see what happened. That's a good point. No, that, that yeah, is. Well, yep. cheating is a huge problem for me. Oh, yeah, and cheating's not a huge exam, problem for me. I, if I give an exam and I've got their computers out, right. I've got to hire four proctors to run around yep. and try and keep them from cheating, and, and that's still not enough. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, and that's probably the advantage. Well, we don't have an honor codes, but that doesn't mean that they're allowed to no, cheat. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Harvey Mudd has a Harvard honor code, and they still have, have issues and stuff. Thank you. So even if I get one good idea out of this conference, and that was the good idea, that's what I will use. I will try to do that. Okay. Um, the other problem was. Um, for, as I said, some of the students in the end, they just couldn't get particularly direct notation to work for them the way they wanted it to work. I mean, it's, I, even though I showed them how to create bras and cats and be able to do all the math, and so they needed to import. But you're right, all I have to do is I could image put it directly into the document. Um, a number of the students did not do the one document model. That was my goal, but I did not do a good job in explaining, so a lot of them would just combine PDFs together. So, see? I learned it. So again, these are some examples of our students coding uh, in this environment. I want you to look at, uh, this is Southern California, so we can actually have class outside. It's very, very nice in June, okay? Um, as I said, literally, okay, how do we make a cat? What is a cat? We call it a cat. What you do is you form the cat of the variable A. What do you make a bra? 
how do I create the, what, what happens when I do the dagger of it? When I essentially, I essentially do the inverse space of it, the adjoint. Okay. And how do I calculate uh, bracket? I don't know whether you can see any of that stuff. Um, but again, this, this is exactly the sort of thing why you do it in 2D is I can write this out and that is exactly the way you need to calculate the energy in the variational principle as they see in the textbook. And that's what sells. And it's very short. So I don't use, for the variational, no, but for the bras and cats, yes. Yeah. Because uh, most of the time I'm trying to reduce it to a few things. Linear algebra, different equations, and the, the bras and cats of the direct notation. And that, there I'd use the physics package. Um, and like this sort of class, I mean, this again doesn't mean anything to you, but I remember as a student doing this type of problem of basically saying, where does this uh, probability density maximize? Um, and it's several pages of calculations, and it's, what, three lines here or something like that? What a, what a difference. Um, many of the students did end up being able to, and I say by hand, construct the solutions. They were able to do this. Um, they were able to generate graphs. They were able to generate animations. Okay. I'll just finish this off. I went and I looked at their output and I ranked their ability at the end. Okay, this is at the end of this quantum mechanic, upper division quantum mechanics course. Um, most of them could do where I considered advanced or skilled. I mean, some were basically do, really doing everything at a level nearly close, nearly to my level. Um, but sure, there were a few students who just couldn't, uh, just couldn't get the direct notation to work for them at all. Um, Half the students claimed that they used Maple at least 90% of the time. Direct notation was least likely. Um, yeah, we already had that issue. Uh, they found that Maple uh, was integrated with uh, quantum mechanics very well. Uh, four did say that it did require more effort. One did say it just wasn't worth it. Um, they did, eight thought out of 14 thought it was essential. Six just thought it was useful. Um, all that certainly had seen, said Maple was superior in their experience with other platforms. By the way, this is all anonymous, so I, can't, I don't know who wrote this. Um, and they like the physical, they do like the, PD, uh, the electronic submission technique, okay? Uh, but this is the, their big one. They would like to see more examples, more examples which are short, targeted to the types of problems they're doing, and a coding community much more like Python or Matlab. And by the way, in the end, I should note that of the 14 students, 11 were women and three would identify as men. So in, in the end, by introducing coding stuff into this and we've been doing it for about 15 years, we've seen a dramatic interest in student interest in coding, particularly by women. Uh, Maple has found to transcend the physics. Uh, this is, uh, the, I see this when a number of students do say they used it in their organic chemistry class even though the professor says, I don't understand what you're doing. That's always nice to hear. Um, actually, they're now gonna allow the students to carry computers into organic chemistry uh, lab. I didn't know why they couldn't before. Maybe it was something about the, the laptops are toxic or something. Um, we are now really started to push towards introducing it early. We now have seven computationally heavy upper division physics courses. Um, mine is generally the heaviest because I'm always pushing the limit. And the number of majors in physics has gone from one half, that's right, one half to 16 graduated each year in that Over period of time. Years? Over the 20 years that basically we've been working on this. Um, it gets students excited, they see the value of it. Even though in the end they say, do you think I'm gonna go to graduate school in physics? No, but they become they go to biology uh, graduate school, they go to biochemistry, um, they do go to medical school and stuff like that. Physics sounds interesting because they see it transcends. All right, and now I have my last point. I would like to thank the, again, the reviewers. I wrote this paper when, well, in fact, when I read the paper, I thought, was I drunk? No, it turned out I was in Italy. And I had, <laughs> I looked at the paper that I submitted, I'm like, God, this is terrible. Um, and it turned out it was at 2,000 feet and it was after 30 hours of travel. So I understand why you really, um, that one, yeah, it, it did, it was not pretty, it was pretty bad. Anyway, I will now take your answer, uh, questions and try to provide as much answer as I can. Thank you.
Dr. Lopez. Um, often students have a tendency, and this is pointed out, is they'll write code further down, and then they'll go back to something earlier, and they'll hit the enter, but unfortunately the variable has been changed at the bottom. Okay, and so the top line, even though it looks like it should work, they don't recognize that Maple has basically renamed or reevaluated re a variable at the bottom, and that's the variable it's using when they try to apply it to something that's at the top, when that they see at the top should be something that's just before that. And so with the worksheet, it's much easier to be able to get them to push to the restart and just hit enter, enter, and enter. So all I do is I teach them every problem, you start with restart, and you start there, and that solves a lot of the coding problems that I had, and it works easier for me for in worksheet mode rather than document mode. That's, that's my biggest one. I, I found the same thing with yeah. the beginning students. If you use the document mode, they think they're using MathCAD. Oh, yeah. yeah. Where you make a change down here and it changes everything up here. Yep. Uh, but maybe it won't do that. Well, you can make yeah, it. You can. Yeah, you can. Uh, so it, it, but with advanced users, sure. they like the worksheet mode. So yeah. I mean, I write all my homeworks in, in document now, mode. Now beginning users. Yes, please. Um, so you have probably answered my question when you mentioned the chemistry class, but I have been wondering, well, you said your goals included making students comfortable with maple. Right. And, um, and also finding it useful. Right. Um, and so I was just wondering, you know, whether they're comfortable with it, finding it useful in your course, or whether it extends beyond your course. No, it, it definitely extends beyond the course. It definitely, students who come to me later, so we have a site license at our institution. So what happens is they will be in my class, they will get to the end of the year, and their um, activation code ends. So they need a new actor. So I'm constantly getting emails. I was in your class, but I want to use this for this upper division biochemistry course. And the answer is I just give them the new site license number and stuff like that. It turns out they all come to me. They don't ask the IT people, I don't know why. But that's, that's certainly I have enough evidence that that works. Other questions, please. You mentioned that the students get used to the teacher teaching them how it works. Now that's an interesting question. Um, not much. I haven't emphasized that, and the one of the reasons why the context then starts writing, like instead of saying eval f uh, pi comma twenty nine, it'll say eval f open square bracket twenty nine of pi, something like that. If I want, if I if I wanted to say what, what is the what, what is the approximate value of pi, and so it tends to add more maple coding in that they're comfortable with. So some of them will do that, but by or like for example, they'll hit plot, but they won't set the limits, and now the plot goes well beyond what they what I really want they needed to do. And so in fact, to the point where it will plot from minus ten to ten, but physically it's unreasonable to be anything other than a positive x value to plot. So I think they do do it, but they find that once they get comfortable with, with a few commands, it's easier just to type in and hit enter there. Okay. But they, a lot of them, they certainly use the palettes to do a derivative, to do an integral, things like that. And in fact, they tend to drop the idea of writing int of something. Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't have, it didn't look like you had any coding. You're not teaching them to write procedures and not teaching, you're avoiding loops because you, you use. I can use sequence. sequence. Uh, yeah. right. But do, do you teach any loops or any coding? Yeah, I, when we get to a point, and this is later on where there's enough sophistication and that we've done enough examples, I can do a for loop. But none of these students have had coding per se. So this is a new concept I have to introduce. I'm already, I mean, the complaint already about physics is there's just too much content, which I actually agree with. So I'm actually adding a level of complexity to it, but I, the argument is they get out of it, they're not wasting time doing algebra, which is, which is one of my big, but. Um, so, so I'm, I'm asking that question because I'm teaching a class 
Right. Okay, so for that one beat is probably better. Maybe not, it's debated. Yeah. But if you're not teaching that, then two B is much easier. Yeah. Well let me let me, again the um this this is like a let's see if, I don't know if I can make it any larger. This is sort of like a class here here's a procedure here. I pass it a wave function and it calculates the uh, energy do using um, how we do it. It's basically an integral over an integral. And yes, we could write that in 1D. No, I understand that. But there's no, to me, that's not coding. That's just a, that's just a function. Oh, it's, it's just, this is just a function. Oh, yeah, and there is another one where I, I do add a do loop. But by, by basically adding the do loop, but there's the math that's going on there. And the do loop is, yeah, they eventually get used to a do loop. And they'll get, they'll, they, they can read um, conditional statements even if I, they've had no coding experience whatsoever. That's a little bit. But most of the time, just sequence as one line is an elegant way. And a lot of them are going to take MATLAB and it's all going to be vectorized. I'm very glad to hear that because I totally received that. <laughs> oh, you did? <laughs> Oh no, it, it's, it's, it is heavily used in my class. It is, they see, oh, it's just, that's all we're doing. The same thing over and over again. We're just changing one number. Okay, that's good. All right, anything else? All right, thank you very much.